we all have people that we influence. So we really can make a difference. And it's actually one-to-one -one interactions that are the most fertile places for evangelization. So just realizing, not in a cheesy way, but that you have the power, really, the ability to impact another person in their faith. My name is Katie Asko and basically Jesus gave us the Great Commission. So he told us to go out and make disciples of all nations. Now there are 7.6 billion people on the planet and only 1 billion of those are Catholic. So we have 6.6 .6 billion people to tell the good news to. And ironically, I think the place we need to start is with ourselves. So we need to know our faith. We need to, ve to develop divine intimacy with God and we need to be willing to share our faith with others. So those are the three things I talk about in this workshop why we should do them and how we can do them. So I just kind of want to, I want to start this um, workshop by just being very honest. Um, I've been Catholic my whole life and I think anyone who is Catholic or has been Catholic for some substantial amount of time knows that being Catholic isn't always easy. So as Catholics, we want a lot of things in the world to change. I mean, we want the world to be a place where we can grow in virtue, we want it to be a place where we can raise our kids in the faith. And as I mentioned in the introduction, we're looking to evangelize about 6.6 .6 billion people. So I just want to start off and say it's not always easy easy being Catholic, but I also think that now is a really important time to be not just Catholic, not just a lukewarm Catholic, but actually a really bold Catholic because, you know, say there's less people in their faith today than there were a couple of decades ago, especially in Ireland. We've had a rough time with the faith um, and with different moral issues that have come up in referenda and all that. We now have a time when we really have to be bold with our faith and that means really investing in it and also realizing the the responsibility we have to share our faith. So I think it's really important that we are equipped um, and also just realizing the universal call to holiness. This is something that some different orders kind of focus on um, and different saints have talked about it throughout the years. But I think it's really important to remember we're all called to be saints, not just priests or religious, the laity as well. We're called to really strive for sanctity, for sainthood. Um, so I have three pillars in this workshop that I really want you to hopefully remember and to take in. Um, I'm also going to just say at this point, I really like lists. So please feel free to just make notes if you like. There's going to be a couple of different lists, but the first kind of overarching list or the pillars of this talk are three things. So it's know your faith, develop divine intimacy, and be willing to share your faith with others. And I'm gonna break those three things down. Um, but first I just wanna kind of cast vision for what the world would look like uh, if, if Catholics did these things, if we did them maybe better than we currently are. So if everyone, I mean, if 1 billion Catholics in the world were to know their faith really well, were to develop divine intimacy with God, like really go into a deeper place with God and be equipped to share their faith with others, like we'd have the world evangelized in no time at all. But I also want to emphasize just what one person can do because, I mean, it's cheesy. Like you hear it all the time, oh, one person matters. But it really, really is true, especially in sharing our faith because we all have different spheres of influence. Like we all have our friends, our families, our coworkers, you know, maybe we go to school or college, whatever it is, we all have people that we influence. So we really can make a difference. And it's actually one-to-one -one interactions that are the most fertile places for evangelization. So just realizing, not in a cheesy way, but that you have, have the power really the ability to impact another person in their faith it, it really is how it works um, and also to emphasize Jesus's model right so Jesus obviously came to earth uh, God made man and he evangelized the world like we are 1 billion Catholics today and yeah that might be smaller than what it was several years ago don't have to focus on that too much but we are now a church of 1 billion people and that started with Jesus coming to earth just one person and yeah he had his public ministry but he mostly spent his time with his 12 apostles and even then he invested even more deeply in just three so James John the beloved disciple and Peter so that's not very many people that Jesus you know, invested in. And uh, then now we have 1 billion people. So we are to follow the model of the master. So if we follow Jesus model, we really can make a difference. Um, so yeah, and I want to also encourage just anyone who's like, oh yeah, I'm already kind of doing those things. I know my faith, I have a relationship with God. I'm sharing it with others. Um, I just encourage you to take it even a step further, to assess where you're at 
and realize we can always be improving. So really just to go even deeper in those three things, realizing that we are made for great greatness, not comfort, as Pope Benedict has told us. So again, God is calling us to do these three things. It's crucial not only to our faith, but also to our relationship with God and to our evangelization efforts. Um, so we really do have a duty to do these three things. So I'm going to break down the first, which is know your faith. Um, and first of all, again, another list. Apologies if you don't like lists. Um, but I have four reasons why I think it's really important that we know our faith. And maybe you know that it's important to know your faith, but sometimes it's good to have a bit of extra motivation. So hopefully this can provide that. So the first is that it strengthens our relationship with God. And I think this really makes sense because if you compare it to, say, a human relationship or even, say, a married couple if they don't know anything about each other like if they don't know what the other person likes what they like to do what they like to eat where they came from who their family is if you don't know the first thing about your spouse you're not going to be able to love them very well so if we apply that to our relationship with God I think it's also quite true that we're not going to be able to love him very well if we don't know anything about him and about his church so I think for our relationship with God we should know our faith and um, I also think just to strengthen our own faith with God so just to have the logic in our head and um, so that we are rooted in our faith just for ourselves also for sharing our faith with others and not the third pillar and we'll get into that later in more depth but I think it's really important to realize we can't share something we ourselves don't have so we need to know our faith so we can share it with others and then fourthly knowledge is power so that's kind of another cliche or whatever knowledge is power but I want to add a caveat that I think is really important I think the subject matter of the knowledge that you were learning is really important because learning about you know a type of food as much as I love food um, learning about food maybe isn't the most powerful type of knowledge we can have or a sport or even another human being like if we take the subject matter that is our faith and our faith is the most important thing and knowing more about our faith is ordered towards our life's purpose which is getting to heaven and bringing as many people with us as possible so that kind of knowledge, knowledge of our faith, is actually the most important type of knowledge that there is. So knowing knowledge of our faith actually has infinite value. So if we're going to spend time knowing, you know, all the different types of hamburgers there are, or everything there is to know about rugby, or everything there is to know about our best friend or even spouse, then we should probably take a good amount of time to know the most important person there is and that is God and again it's ordered towards our life's purpose which is getting to heaven bringing as many people with us as possible um so getting on to how we can know our faith because I want to be practical as well and I'm going to keep an eye on time good um so first of all what knowing our faith isn't right and these are just some pitfalls that I'm very aware of because I've fallen into them myself so they come with absolutely no judgment but they're important to be aware of so the first thing knowing your faith isn't is kind of lurching from Sunday to Sunday maybe half paying attention to the 10 minute homily or 15 minute homily however long it is that you get from Sunday mass and kind of thinking oh yeah that's my formation I'm listening to this homily taking in most of it or some of it and that's that that's definitely not what knowing our faith at least deeply is neither is it and this is a particularly important one neither is it being a retreat or conference or pilgrimage junkie but not filling in our knowledge of the faith in between those wonderful experiences so you could be going to all the retreats throughout the year but not doing anything in between and that wouldn't be knowing your faith as well as you probably should so getting on to the how, how can we actually do this rather than why we should do it or how we can't do it. Um, first of all, just realizing, yeah, the faith is vast. There's 2000 years of, I mean, the Catholic church, 2000 years old. So there's 2000 years of knowledge and theology, philosophy, social teaching, and so, so much more. So it can be daunting at first. So we kind of need some practicals on how to, uh, yeah, get to it. And the first thing I would say is, maybe think of it like an exam if this is helpful think of knowing your faith like an exam and most of us who have taken exams we take them pretty seriously right you know you have an exam coming up and you're like yeah don't talk to me for three weeks you know so when it comes to our faith if i were to hand you a leaving search paper or a college exam on the catholic faith how well do you think you would do I think that's an important question to ask ourselves. And I came up with this phrase, slightly proud of it, it might be a little bit nerdy, but it's examination of knowledge, right? So we do things called examinations of conscience. That's something that a lot of people do at the end of the day, they kind of examine their day, they think about what sins they've committed, how they can improve, that kind of thing. 
But what about an examination of knowledge? Not every day, that would be ridiculous, but every, every couple of weeks or months, just kind of asking ourselves or even talking to a priest or friend about the faith and kind of breaking down what we know and where we can fill in our, our gaps, essentially. Um, so I think that would be one idea. Also, if you like to read, um, this is going to be pretty easy because there's so many incredible books on the faith out there and you can order most of them online. Um, a couple of books, I'm not a huge reader myself, I will say. Um, I, I do like to read, but I, I could definitely do more. So I just, I think two books that are really important, pretty obvious, the Bible and the Catechism. At some point in our lives, I think every Catholic should read all, if not most, of those two books, um, because they are pretty much the bedrock of the knowledge that we have on the faith. Um, so really important books there. And then also just some books that have really helped me, and this is not an expansive list. I'm sure there's you know, many, many more that can be very helpful, but ones I found really good are Christopher West's Theology of the Body for Beginners. Um, also just as many Dr. Scott Hahn books as you can possibly read. Um, I actually had the privilege of interviewing him recently for calltomore.org. We talked about his late latest book, Hope to Die, where he talks about the Christian meaning of death and the resurrection of her bodies. Just really interesting stuff, like what life will be like in heaven, a topic that's so fascinating and I don't think we know a lot about. Um, so his stuff is incredible. Rome, Sweet Home is obviously an amazing book. Um, Dr. Edward Shree is also really, really good. Um, he used to work for Focus. So he's written so many books, some, some that I've read, Men, Women and the Mystery of Love. That's another stellar book that I really recommend you read. I'm currently reading Love Unveiled by Dr. Edward Shree. It's kind of an overview of the story of Jesus. Um, it's really, really good. Jack Philippe is another wonderful author. I know a lot of people get a lot from his stuff. There's also so many diaries of saints and there's just so many books. So I really, I can't emphasize enough how many wonderful books there are and that's just scratching the surface. Um, but I also want to really make the point that if you're not that into reading or if you think that you can't read enough books on the faith and that's everyone, no matter how much you do read, I would ask you to remember or remind yourself that we also live in the 21st century and there are some incredible resources online. Um, so there's some wonderful ones from the US that you're probably aware of. There's Word on Fire, Essential Presents, a Catholic Answers Forum. There's so, so many and they're so good. Uh, sometimes you have to pay a fee for them, so, but some of the content is free. So just be aware of that. But really, really good stuff that you can just soak up online, podcasts, videos, articles, whatever it is. And there's also a new formation platform that a, a, a small group of people, myself, has started. I'm going to talk about that a bit more towards the end, called to more.org. So it's an online formation platform it's completely free so you can check that out and yeah learn more we have stuff about prayer at the minute and the eucharist that's kind of the stuff we're running i'll talk about more about more about it later um so that's the first main pillar knowing our faith um and the second pillar also incredibly important is developing divine intimacy so divine intimacy it's a book it's also a phrase that uh, you might have heard before but basically how I take it is it just means closeness with God um, and God made us and he loves us. Anyone who's been raised Catholic probably knows that, has heard it a million times and we are called to have a relationship with God. So if you've ever been on a retreat, you probably also know that, but it's really important that we nurture that relationship just like any human relationship. I know I've said it before, but I think that analogy is so important to think about our human relationships versus our relationship with God because we wouldn't ignore a friend or never talk to a friend. Uh, so in the same way we should really talk to God and develop that relationship um, so that's really important and I yeah I think yeah where do I go next I'm going to talk about my personal relationship with God because I think the best way to explain um, yeah, how to have a relationship with God is just to be personal about it and to be honest um, it can be really difficult and I do have my battles and I have my days when I neglect to pray or forget to pray how, however it may be um, but there's kind of five things that I have found really vital to developing my relationship with God um, so first of all confession 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 can't emphasize that enough um, and definitely especially if there's mortal sin on your soul getting to confession as soon as possible not kind of doing that lingering job where you're like oh yeah I'll get to that eventually or not prioritizing it because I think it's really important to remember our souls it's said our souls are like windows and sin especially mortal sin is like dirt so if there's dirt on the window it's going to be very hard to see God clearly and you often just kind of drift away from God when you're in that state so it's really important
important um, to get confession regularly. I recommend personally every one to two weeks, everyone's different. I had one spiritual director say, I thought this was really good. He's like, go as often as you would clean your laundry. So hopefully you're cleaning your laundry every what, two weeks or whatever. So something like that. Um, second is consistency. So I also got to interview Father Mike Schmitz recently uh, for Call to More, and we talked about prayer. And I asked him this question that I definitely have asked many times and I know it's a big one with prayer and that is is quality or quantity more important when it comes to prayer and he just stated it so clearly he's like you know quality comes and goes quantity is kind of arbitrary definitely like have a certain you know not like two minutes ideally of prayer hopefully a bit more than that um but he said consistency is the most important thing so for me i try to pray 20 minutes every day um and that's something i try to be really consistent with sometimes it's less but that's definitely not to be aimed for like i really try and stick to the 20 minutes because it's a commitment um to god and as consistent as we can be with that commitment is ideal um thirdly first fruits so this is also stolen from father mike schmitz i won't lie um he's wonderful and he said you know don't give god kind of your your last drabs maybe at the end of the day when you're kind of falling asleep or you're not really focusing at all um do give god your first fruits in prayer so ideally i think for most people praying in the morning is probably the best time i ask anyone who knows me i am not a morning person at all but i have realized that praying in the morning is actually much better because your mind is clearer you're not already into your day and thinking about all the things you have to do and um, there's just something about praying in the morning and offering the day to god from the beginning that's so so helpful definitely you can pray in the evening as well but i would recommend strongly morning prayer um fourth is get a good spiritual director that is like gold because there might be so many different ways or there are so many different ways to pray and there might be loads that you aren't aware of or that would really click with you that you just yeah don't know so you can have a priest and a spiritual director someone you can meet with usually every two to four weeks and they just walk you through usually your prayer life um and and other things in your life like sometimes you know relationship advice whatever whatever is going on in your life um but really good to get a good spiritual director someone that you connect with and that you know can lead you in your journey with god and then fifth this is just kind of this is quite personal so it's different for everyone but if you're like you're really stuck with prayer you're like i, I don't know what to do i sit down i want to pray don't know where to start what I do and what I would recommend um, if you are stuck with what to do is take something that you can read. So maybe read, ideally not for the whole time of prayer because you want to talk to God as well, but read for say five minutes and then meditate on that. And what you're reading, it can be the gospel, it can be something from a book, whatever it is, um, and, and then sit with that and talk to God and not just exclusively about what you've read, but that can kind of be the Kickstarter because sometimes we can sit down to pray and just like, I've, I've had this and nothing's coming and it just feels really blank um, and dryness is okay it's actually necessary in prayer many priests will say that that dryness actually taking away kind of the good feelings of prayer can be jesus's way of making sure that we're going to prayer for the right reasons we're not just going so that we feel something we're going actually because we want to love god so just remembering that as well so that's just some stuff on developing divine intimacy and um, really important not just for ourselves but also for our relationship with god and i possibly ironically for help for evangelizing others so we can't really share our faith if we don't have a relationship with god you can't really introduce someone to a friend if you don't really know who that person is you're just introducing a stranger and that doesn't really make sense so make sure that you do have a relationship with god it will really affect you obviously yourself your own salvation, your own relationship with God, but it will also affect your ability to evangelize. And there's 6.6 .6 billion people to evangelize. So um, yeah, it's something that we need to do. Wonderful. So the next pillar is being willing to share the faith. And I kind of struggled on what exactly to call this pillar because it's kind of like the idea is to be prepared to share your faith, um, but also knowing your faith is part of that. But I thought being willing to share our faith was a particularly good title for this pillar because as Irish, as Irish sometimes we tend to say, you know, oh, sure, you know, don't want to tread on someone else's business or don't want to um, be too in their face with this or whatever. Um, that, that can sometimes be our way, but I think it's really important that we're actually willing to share. So I'll break that down a little bit. Um, 
so there are three reasons I think um, we should be willing to know our faith. And again, these are the reasons why, just kind of to provide hopefully some motivation and then we'll get into the how. Um, but some reasons why we should be willing to share our faith. First of all, Jesus told us to, that's been mentioned, the Great Commission. Jesus said, go forth and make disciples of all nations. If we're going to have a relationship with Jesus, we should probably listen to what he's telling us to do. Otherwise, it gets a bit awkward. Um, secondly, to stop the trend of people who leave the faith because of what they misunderstand the faith to be. I think that's something we've tragically seen happen quite a lot in Ireland. And I see it among my friends who have left the faith or don't have faith. They kind of, they reject Catholicism mostly because of what they misunderstand it to be. So if we are prepared and willing to share and talk about our faith, we're not kind of just sharing it when we feel like it, when we're not feeling shy or when it's comfortable, not made for comfort, made for greatness. Um, if we can just have those conversations, I think we can help stop that trend of people leaving the faith or rejecting faith because they don't understand what it is. Um, thirdly, a third reason why we should be willing to share our faith is to avoid the very very sometimes distressing and very disappointing um, situation that is going to happen and probably has happened to all of us, which is getting stumped on a question of faith by someone who is genuinely curious about the faith. And these situations can be super frustrating because we know that there's so much knowledge of the Catholic faith. We know there's 2000 years of knowledge. We wish we could just whip out St. Thomas Aquinas's Summa or the Bible or the Catechism or whatever, but oftentimes time and situations don't allow for that. So if we can just be willing and prepared to have those conversations, um, I think those are actually really important moments that can be really important moments of encounter and it'd be a shame to have them as missed opportunities. So hopefully that provides some motivation for why we should be willing. Um, and then for the actual how. Um, so first of all, again, I think it's really important and there's a reason why I've structured these three things. Um, first of all, we need to know our faith and have a relationship with God. Only then can we share those things with others. So those really are the first two steps. Once we have those two things, now we go for it, right? Um, but how do we actually do that? Um, I have six things. It's my longest list, I promise. I just couldn't take any of these out. I tried to, but I couldn't. Um, so the first is to pray to God for guidance. Um, I think sometimes you do have to use prudence like I won't lie there are situations when you don't want to you know with brute force just kind of put your faith out there or make it really uncomfortable for someone else I know we're not made for comfort we're made for greatness but there's definitely a certain level of prudence and um, sometimes that you need to employ um, so I would pray to God for guidance and then I would err on the on the side of being courageous because usually fear can hold us back um, but also just realizing that there is prudence involved as well Secondly, I would say learn your testimony. And um, this is something I'm kind of carrying over from my time with Focus. So Focus is a fellowship of Catholic University students. They're a wonderful campus outreach ministry and I was a missionary with them last year in Oklahoma. They're also based in UCD. So there's a wonderful team there. Um, hopefully you know them or can get to know them. They're really, really great people. I live with some of them, so I kind of have to say that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so they talk about learning your testimony. That was something as missionaries we were encouraged to do. Well, we kind of had to. Um, and we taught our disciples to do that as well. So learning off your testimony, it's actually quite ideal to have a one, two, and five minute version of it because you know you need it for different lengths for different situations. But just having a general idea of kind of your life before Christ, your conversion to Christ, and your life after Christ. That's kind of the three main components of a testimony. So I'd encourage you to learn that. Um, and then having authentic friendships this is also kind of taken from focus. Um, so yeah, there's kind of two things here. First of all, having authentic friendships with people, which you hopefully already have, but also kind of being intentional with those friendships and maybe befriending what you could call seekers. So people who might kind of be on the edge of having faith or just getting into their faith, um, who might be kind of open, yeah, open to conversations on faith. So that can be quite an intentional thing and developing an authentic friendship first. And that's where, that's kind of a prudent step, right? Because if you were just to walk up to them and start talking about faith, that could be really weird. But if you actually have a friendship with them, um, then that opens up way more opportunities to talk about much deeper things. Um, fourth is having moral authority. So this isn't directly kind of 
uh, an active thing that you have to do to, to evangelize, but I think it's something that's really important to have. So moral authority basically means that you're not being a hypocritical Catholic. So it gets very strange, embarrassing and slightly awkward when say you're out with your friends and maybe they don't have faith and you do and they're like oh i didn't know a christian did that like had so many drinks or did that certain thing that you know is a bit scandalous um so definitely having moral authority we should actually be like above above and beyond what kind of the you know not sinning zone is because if we want to be an example to others and we want to call people higher you kind of have to be you know, above reproach. And that's not to say you're going to be perfect. Like we can obviously um, always have forgiveness and mercy from God, but it's ideal if you're trying to witness, if you're trying to bring people to Christ, that you yourself are really practicing what you preach and ideally being above and beyond reproach. Um, fifth is to research a few good kind of go-to resources that you can kind of have ready. Um, obviously this doesn't, you know, replace knowing your faith at all, but just kind of good to have maybe some books in mind or even video resources, podcasts, whatever, um, that you can not necessarily on the spot, but kind of, um, yeah, in conversations later or just kind of following up with a link to a certain thing that uh, you can share with people. So just having kind of a library of those in mind is, is a good idea. And then six, it's the sixth thing is just getting out of your comfort zone. I just really want to emphasize that because again, I think as Irish, we can be kind of, um, slow to put ourselves out there and I'm not saying you have to be American about it or um, sorry I can say that because I'm half American so no offense at all um, but you don't have to be yeah kind of different or strange or not that that's what American is um, but you don't have to be you know not yourself about it I guess is what I mean so um, yeah there's definitely ways to do that and I just encourage you to be uncomfortable sometimes unfortunately that is what it takes but there's a reward for it god like god knows what you're doing for him and it's all so so worth it not just for yourself but also for the people that you're helping so really important um and just a few final points on this pillar which is uh, being willing to share your faith i would say in-person evangelization is the most effective so yes we can get into you know wonderful sometimes not, not so wonderful debates or conversations online with people. Um, and I think online is a place where, yeah, we can form ourselves, we can watch videos, listen to podcasts, read articles. It, like the internet is an amazing tool. You're watching, hopefully this, you know, well, if you're here, you are watching this workshop on, you know, Zoom. So you're on the internet. Like the internet is a really important space for, for our formation and uh, for getting, yeah, getting material out there. But I don't think it's the place necessarily for evangelization. So I would say in-person conversations are the most effective thing. So I would use the internet for your own formation and yes, for sharing links to other people. But remember that it's those in-person conversations that are the most effective uh, when it comes to evangelizing. Um, also just remember, I kind of alluded to it earlier, but just remember that you have your own sphere of influence. Like no matter how busy you are or or whatever your life looks like, you live in the country or the city or whatever, we all have our spheres of influence, whether it's our parents or our siblings or a friend or a colleague, like we all, we all have encounters with people, maybe less so because of COVID at the moment, but we do all have our spheres of influence. Everyone can be influential. And because in-person interactions are the most influential, you know, don't underestimate what those what the power of those can be. You don't have to have a big platform or be famous or anything like that to be effective in evangelizing. And we're all called to evangelize because we've been given the Great Commission. Um, and then thirdly, I would just say, that wasn't even a list, but thirdly, I would say, um, not to feel that evangelization is a burden, um, but rather, and this might take time, that's fine, but to get to the place where it feels just like joy overflowing like you love jesus so much you love your faith you want to get to heaven you want to bring as many people with you as possible and you just have this overflowing joy that you want to share with others that should really be i think the heart of evangelization not oh you know jesus told me to do this thing what a shame like i really couldn't be bothered don't want to it's not fun it's not comfortable like if you have to start there fine no problem but we should definitely try to get to the place where it's just overflowing joy and it's a joyful thing that we're we're doing um so yeah just kind of to sum all of that up and i'll talk a little bit about a resource that can hopefully help you with 
um, those three things. Uh, we're called to the greatest mission ever. Jesus literally from his own mouth gave us the great commission to go out and evangelize the world. Um, and yeah, just remember to commit to those three things. If, if you can't remember all the lists, that's fine. Um, but I would just ask you to try and remember the three things, which is know your faith, develop divine intimacy and be willing to share your faith with others. Um, I'm just going to check time. I think I've talked for 20-ish minutes. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but I'll just tell you a little bit about Called to More, which has been mentioned a little bit already. Um, but essentially Called to More, yeah, it's a new online formation platform. It's based in Ireland, started by a small team and I, uh, completely free to access. We do videos, podcasts, articles, um, it's basically a resource that we want to like for you to use to invest in yourself. We wanted to help you on this journey. And um, this wasn't overly prescribed or planned, but our, our mission actually is those three pillars that this talk was about. So our mission is to help you know your faith by looking at this online content and absorbing it. It's to help you develop divine intimacy with God, with God by knowing your faith. And we kind of talk a lot about prayer, different types of prayer. Um, like during the pandemic, we had an article on how to pray at home. So we're constantly talking about prayer. And uh, we have a wonderful interview with Father Mike Schmitz, which is all about how to improve your prayer life. Um, so that's on our website, called tomorrow.org. Um, and then thirdly, to be willing or to be equipped is what we say, to go out and evangelize. So we give tips for evangelization and also just a knowing your faith that's also equipping you to go out and share your faith. Um, so just to talk a little bit more about what we have up there. So our video series is something actually really exciting. We developed it because of the pandemic. So it's called Colloquy and it's essentially a series of videos video calls that I have with different leading figures in the Catholic faith. So I've spoken with Father Mike Schmidt, spoken with Dr. Scott Hahn, spoken with Father Columba Jordan. He's a CFR based in Derry, used to come along to a lot of the youth thousand retreats um, and still probably does. Um, we talked to Father Shane Sullivan, who's also, he's based on the west coast of Ireland. We talked to Father Gavin Jennings, who's based in Dublin. Uh, we've talked to Father Connor McDonough, who's also based in Dublin. He's a Dominican, who you might know as well. He comes to a lot of the retreats. So we've had a lot of really, really wonderful conversations uh, about loads of different topics. So Colloquy kind of touches on a lot of things. The Eucharist, we've talked about life in heaven. We've talked about prayer. We've talked about how to study the Bible, um, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, how to live in the world, but not of it all these different things so that's been really really fun i've really enjoyed that and uh, we're currently developing a series on prayer so we're going to have lots of different articles coming out on different ways to pray how to pray and um, how to teach someone else how to pray all these different kind of angles and approaches to prayer there's a lot of articles so we kind of cover hopefully everything um, and then our podcast as well which is on spotify and pretty much every platform google podcast apple Podcasts, all of those good things um, our podcast is it had to slow down a little bit because of pandemic we couldn't meet up in person but we have a couple of episodes up there and we're still getting messages about them so um hopefully they're still yeah they're still getting out there um so that's pretty much it um just as well we're four months old call to more so um we're rapidly developing there's been thousands of people interacting with our content every single month um th thousands of people come to the website and then actually a lot more than that on our social media so it's great to see that it seems to be a resource that's um needed it's being used that's exactly why we made it and we're delighted to see that and because of the internet uh we can tell where people are actually viewing it from and a large large majority about 75 percent are viewing our content from ireland so we're so delighted to be irish based and really um, it seems helping Irish people know more about their faith. So I do encourage you to check it out, calledtomore.org, or you can find us on social media at CTM Catholic. Katie, thank you so much for that inspiring workshop. Um, loving all the lists I was jotting down as you were going along. <laughs> <laughs> You're like me. Well. This. Um, and for just, we've learned so much just how to develop our relationship with God and how to evangelize and all you've mentioned in so few minutes. Um, yeah, just to suppose call tomorrow, I'd like to ask, I was jotting down a few questions as you were speaking, just a few questions about it, uh, if that's okay. Yeah, please. Yeah, um, well, I, per I personally follow you on Instagram and that, and it's no surprise that it's so, such a success as the videos are so professionally done and um, so informative. So definitely anybody check it out, but just a few more questions on it. Um, why do you think it's important that the Catholic message, I suppose, is taken to the internet or how do you feel it can be done well? Mm. Yeah, I think that's a really 
important point because as I said briefly, you know, the internet I don't think is a place for evangelization, but it is a place to form ourselves. And I think what's really interesting is if you look at some Protestant churches, they like their pastors or their churches will have sometimes hundreds of thousands or millions. I've actually seen pastors with tens of millions of followers on Instagram. Um, and that's not because they have tens of millions of people showing up to their church. It's because they've invested in a smart social media strategy. They see, they see the power of social media. They see how much they can really reach young people and interact with them. So I think we have a lot to learn there. And I think, yeah, if I'm honest, I think the Catholic church has a lot to do. We have a, a, you know, a bit of a way to go in really improving our our reach and our kind of yeah our output our content um on social media so i think it's really important it's wonderful to see new initiatives take off we're only one there's been several others taken off um that i think are really really needed and yeah so i think i think do being done well though is is another point to really emphasize because we could just you know fire up a couple of words or a poorly produced podcast or you know video that's kind of got lots of wind in the background or you know someone looking off in the distance or like you know it could be unprofessionally done basically is what I'm saying and I think that would actually could potentially be more harmful than it is good so I think it's really important that we have high quality because young people are used to engaging with brands of very high quality so if you think of like Nike or Coca-Cola like their branding is incredible and so much money goes into that um, but they become brands that young people trust right um, so if the Catholic faith is going to be presented online. I think it needs to be done well with high quality and um, with interesting content so that especially young people, because that's who our, our ministry mostly, it's who we have in mind when we're making our content. Our content's online. It's available for anyone and everyone, of course, but we do have to have a target audience in mind. So I think for young people, especially, it's really important that quality is high. And that's something we're really committed to with Call to More. Yeah, and you've mentioned as well the American platforms. I know we're all so familiar with Extension Presents and that, but it's so important to note that, as you said, your online form formation um, is completely free and it is Irish-based, so it's so great to see such it done so professionally. And you mentioned different priests in Ireland having them on to speak. Um, but I suppose another question I have is, what has your success rate been like so far or how has it been since you began? Mm. Yeah, and I think I'll just touch on that point as well that you brought up because being Irish based is actually quite important, I believe, for Ireland um, because we can actually target Irish people with our content. So when you pay, for example, for a social media advertisement, we can target Ireland so that you know, most young people, young Catholics in Ireland will actually see our content. And as you mentioned, it's giving a platform to Irish speakers. So I just think that's also really important. And it's so great that um, we have so many incredible Irish priests and religious and lay people who are so good at talking about the faith and oftentimes very funny as well, very, very interactive. Um, so to give them a platform, I think is, yeah, really exciting. It's something that I'm really excited about. Um, as for, sorry, the question was our reach, I believe. Your success, yeah, your success. Our success, success yeah. Yeah, so we're having several thousand people come to the website every month, which uh, was that which is actually huge for a new platform. So we're only around four months and the longer you exist, the more people kind of stumble across the website and the higher you get up on your Google rankings and everything like that. So to be four months old and getting thousands of people to the website every month is a huge success. And then our social media has been booming, especially Facebook and Instagram. So Facebook, we've been reaching, well, some of our videos, I think all of our videos, all of our substantial videos getting several thousand views. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's not obviously, you know, we're not view hungry or view crazy, but just to know that we're creating content that is actually being watched and is actually being helpful is so, so exciting. Um, and yeah, the podcast as well. We've been, I think, I think the most important thing actually, because you can talk about figures all you want and it sounds kind of cold. It is exciting. And um, especially when you started something new, you want it to be used, but looking at the comments and the messages actually is so, so encouraging because you know that people aren't just kind of, you know, watching it and then getting bored or, you know, people are actually commenting and messaging with really personal things about their prayer lives and how this has helped them or just, yeah, different, different situations that um, people have messaged in about have been so encouraging um, and give me the fire, I guess, to keep going with it. Yeah, that sounds absolutely great. Um, and like that, even over lockdown, I had more, uh, more time to check it out and that um, 
and I'm sure you know it's viewership going up or whatever but it's so great especially because it's Irish based and all the priests in Ireland getting that platform mm. to speak um, it's brilliant so it's, it's so inspiring to hear that just one more question before you go sure. um, <laughs> what does call tomorrow mean for the future of the Catholic faith in Ireland mm. yeah that's a good question and I've kind of touched on a few of those things already um, I don't know I guess like it's I have a vision. I definitely do. I have a vision for Call to More that, you know, not only do we hope to reach a lot of people in Ireland and obviously seeing the messages and comments come in, knowing that it's actually impacted people's lives is that's like huge. And that's the first step. Um, but we really just want this to be, yeah, something that Irish people can be proud of a platform where Irish speakers can go to, to get their content out there. Like you'd be surprised or hopefully not surprised, but there's so many, priests who have like this incredible content and they might be delivering it to schools or to their local church but like that stuff deserves a lot more attention like it's so rich and there's so much to it and so many people can get so much from it so yeah just kind of unlocking that knowledge and that wisdom um from our priests especially like we've talked to a lot of priests recently but also our religious sisters and lay people um it's just really really exciting and we're also hoping down the line um to host like conferences and things in person as well so people can really meet and kind of interact in a more personal way but i think hopefully for the church in ireland like if we can effectively carry out our mission which this whole talk has been about those three things knowing our faith developing divine intimacy and being willing to share our faith with others like if we can actually get that message across and equip people in ireland catholics in ireland to do those three things and obviously I'm sure a lot of people are already doing them, but even to do those even more, like I think the impact we can have in Ireland is huge. Like it's, it's actually really exciting. So yeah, I'm really hoping that, um, yeah, it continues to go well and people really do get a lot from it. Yeah. And thank you again at the beginning, you mentioned, um, you know, the idyllic vision of 1 billion people knowing their faith very really well, but you're really reminding us that it all started from one person. And it's just such an exciting story to hear how well called tomorrow is, has mm. success rate and everything and how many viewers you're reaching and um, the Irish religious who are getting involved so yeah that comes to the end of my questions Katie mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for joining us here today um, and anybody who's who's tuned in it's calledtomorrow.org is that your social media? yes exactly yeah so to check it out informative so professionally done so get an Instagram or Facebook and uh, definitely check it out and just Want to wish you and Edward all the best in your mar marriage preparations over the next few weeks. A Thank busy few weeks ahead, I'd imagine. Yes, very busy, but we're very excited. <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. And be assured of our prayers here at UT1000. And um, hopefully we'll catch up with you both in person at a retreat very soon. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lisa.